only request of the tenant the court can accept it or the court can pass an order for depositing the arrears of the rent. Here the question is section 17 of the Connecticut Rent Act 1999 provides for where the landlord does not accept any rent and other charges tendered by the tenant within the time and the manner referred to in section 16 or refuges or neglects to deliver a receipt referred to the rate. Now, section 16 of the uh, current current act 1999 provides for it is the obligation of the landlord to provide or to issue receipt. See, section 16 says the receipt to be given for rent and other charges paid. This is the obligation of the landlord to provide a receipt, rent receipt. But here the question is, what will be the consequences in case if the landlord fails to provide or fails to issue or refuses or neglects to deliver a receipt referred to the rent or where there is a bona fide doubt as to the person or persons to whom the rent and other charges are payable. No, this is also very important. See, <coughs> where there is a bona fide doubt as to the person or persons to whom the rent and other charges are payable, then the, the <coughs> this is very important. Here, what <coughs> where there is a bona fide doubt. See, for example, you have heard in the, <coughs> in the interpleader suit in a CPC civil procedure code. What is an interpleader suit is? See, there is a dispute between the defendant. There is no the plenty is ready to provide or ready to give the or ready to uh, 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 give the arrears of the rent. But the landlord, but there is a doubtful or where there is a bona fide doubt as to the person or persons to whom the rent or other charges payable. Doubtful is under that circumstances also the tenant can deposit arrears of the rent under section 17 of the Karnataka Rent Act 1999 before the before whom before the rent controller and appointed under section 23 of the Karnataka Rent Act 1999. Now, other charges put the control in the prescribed manner. Yes. This is the very important provision. Here, the, the deposit shall be accompanied by the application by the tenant containing the following particulars. That is there, then the on deposit of the rent by the tenant before the assistant commissioner, then the certain procedure has to be followed. What is the procedure to be followed he is given <coughs> in the uh, in this act in the section 17 of the act itself. So, See, notice has to be sent to the landlord, all those things procedure has to be followed. Then the, <coughs> yes, uh, I hope you have understood this is section 17 of the uh, Rent Act 1999. If there is any doubt or difficulties, you can ask me. Here, what is to be seen, the, uh, uh, the deposit shall be accompanied by an application by the tenant containing the following particulars, namely, the premises for which the rent and other charges deposited with a, with a description sufficient for identifying the premises. So, then the description of the schedule premises has to be given. Then the period for which the rent and other charges are deposited. Then the what is the <coughs> period for which the rent and other charges are deposited. These are the particulars to be furnished by the tenant at the time of depositing of the rent with the rent controller appointed under section 23 of the current current act 1999. Yes, these are the important. Next important provision is, which is very much useful for the legal profession, section 27. What is section 27? Chapter 6 of the current current act 1999. Yes, certain conditions are there before initiating proceedings or before filing HRC proceedings against the tenant for recovery of possession of the premises. What are the conditions? See, first and foremost thing is section 27 2A 
as i said in the beginning itself section 272a here the <coughs> my next question whether the issuance of notice is mandatory before initiation of the proceedings against the tenant yes anybody notice should be given na? yes under what circumstances is notice is mandatory under what circumstances is notice is not mandatory yes anybody How many days is that much notice has to be given? 15 days. Huh? 15 days. 15 days is given in section 106 of the Act, India. Two months. Yes. Here, two months is not much notice has to be given to the tenant in case if the landlord wants to recover the arrears of the rent. And the other problem, corresponding problem is there, that is section 45 of the Karnataka Rent Management Act. First we will see the section 27. Section 27 is the <coughs> most important section for legal professionals and also even if you write the, <coughs> uh, if you appear for the examination. Here what is section 27 to A? Here the court may, on an application made to it in the prescribed manner, make an order for the recovery of possession of the premises. on one or more of the following grounds of the name now the <coughs> for recovery of for the recovery of possession of the premises the court may <coughs> may make an order so on one or more of the following grounds first and for <coughs> see that the tenant has neither paid nor tendered the value of the arrears of the rent and other charges legally recoverable from him within 2 months from the date on which a notice of demand a notice of demand for payment of has been served on him by the landlord in the manner provided in section 106 of the transfer of property act see <coughs> how to issue the notice or the manner of service of the notice is see what is given uh, under section 106 of the transfer of property act same more has to be uh, <coughs> apply here the question is if there is any arrears of the rent 60 days 60 days in advance notice has to be given to the tenant only after the expiry of 60 days from the date of receipt of the notice by the tenant then the proceedings has to be initiated here also to this general law also one exception is there under those exceptional circumstances even if notice is also not required see under what circumstances notice is not required see provided that the tenant shall not be entitled to the when the service of the notice by the landlord under this clause where having obtained such benefit once in respect of any premises he again makes a default in the payment of rent and other charges payable in respect of it it means see when once the notice is issued to the tenant to make the arrears of the rent or to <coughs> for payment of the arrears of the rent but the tenant paid the rent which is covered under the legal notice or under the notice issued under section 27 subsequently he has defaulted uh, subsequently he did not pay the rent or he is a defaulter or he is a chronic defaulter in payment of the rent then the once again notice is not required when notice when the notice is given to the tenant only once not twice this is yes <coughs> the question is again provided that uh, here in this at the way in a proceeding for eviction of the tenant uh, on the ground the specified in this class the tenant is to be evicted then the court shall make an order directing the tenant to vacate the premises unless pays to the tenant pays to the landlord or deposits into the court within one month of the date of the order an amount calculated at the rate at it it means see <coughs> notice is issued then the, there is an arrears of the rent then the court has given a direction to the defendant to pay the arrears of the rent and the one month within a period of one month from the date of the order if no ten, uh, arrears of the rent has been paid by the tenant then the the court has got power to pass an order for eviction of the tenant means directing the tenant to 
vacate and deliver vacant possession of the premises to the land. One month time is given to make the arrears of the rent. If it is not paid, then the eviction order will be passed by the court. Yes, this is given under section 27 to all of the act. Yes, <coughs> section 27 to all is very important section. Yes, why? Because this is frequently used section in the legal profession. It is frequently used in the legal section. In the why? What is section 27 to all? Anybody? Then you have Section 27 to R. To this uh, uh, section 27 to R, one exception is there. First, 27 to R, he can see the possession of the premises for his own use and occupation. See that the premises that are required, whether in the same form or after reconstruction or rebuilding by the landlord for occupation for himself or for any member of his family, if he is the owner thereof, or for any other person for whose benefit the premises are held, and that the landlord or such person has no other reasonably suitable accommodation. Here, provided that to this general rule, one exception is there, landlord has acquired the premises by transfer. Not to this general rule, one, one, uh, uh, one exception is there. No application for the recovery of possession of such premises shall lie under this class unless a period of one year has elapsed from the date of acquisition. Yes, even <coughs> there is a precondition. What is the have understood this provision, this uh, exceptional provision. Under the see, under the general rule is he can make an application for recovery of the possession of the premises from the tenant. If he is required for his own use or for his <coughs> bona fide requirement. But one year should have been completed from the date of in case if the landlord has purchased the property from the third person. But only after one year from the date of acquisition of the property, then the proceedings for recovery of the for recovery of the premises has to be initiated by the landlord and the tenant. Till the expiry of the one year period, landlord cannot file a case for recovery of possession of the premises. This is from reading, this is the sum and substance of this section. Hope you have understood. Yes. This is section 27 to R to this general general rule is, but again but there is a one of it, there are so there are so many Supreme Court judgments are there. This is the important only the I am covering only important sections which are useful for the legal profession, even for your examination also. Yes. Then the where the landlord see for the purposes of this class and sections 28 to 31. Now, the 31 also, this is very important section. Why? Because what has to be seen is age of the landlord has to be seen. Whether the landlord is a senior citizen or not. And also, section 31, what is section 31 of the. Yes, anybody? Carry on with section 31. Yes. Huh? Ah, retired defense personnel. Any uh, three defenses that you could know, our again, special provision is made under section, <coughs> yes, and also special provision is made in respect of, yes, section 29 provides for right to recover immediate possession, immediate possession of premises to accrue to members of armed forces to members of armed forces, etc. This is section 29 of the Act. Then section 30 of the Act is also special provision is made in respect of 
government employees. Here, the right to recover is section 30. Immediate possession of premises to accrue to employee of state or central government. This is then very important section is section 31 of the Act. 31 of the Act provides for right to recover immediate possession of premises to accrue to a widow where the landlord is a widow and the premises let out by her or by her husband. Then the, where the landlord is a handicapped person and the premises let out by him. Then where the landlord is a person who is the age of 65 years or more and the premises let out by him. Here is required for use by her or him, uh, <coughs> for her or his family or for anyone for ordinary living with him or her. These are the special provisions made for immediate recovery of possession of the premises. And when once the petition is filed, either under section 31.1c, 31.1a, 31.1b of the current Act 1999, special procedure has to be followed, prescribed under section 42 of the Karnataka and Tatman. Yes, what is section 42? No, only when a petition is filed under section 29, 30, 31. 31 provides for if the landlord is a widow, if the landlord or where the landlord is a handicapped person or where the landlord is a senior citizen attained at the age of 65 years or more, then the special procedure has to be followed by the court well, <coughs> while exercising. See, what is the special procedure to be followed by the court when the petition was instituted under section 31.1c, 31.1a, 1b, 1c and 29.30. 29 is applicable to the defense speaker. Defense speaker okay. 30 is applicable to the state government and the central government employee. Then the 42, uh, then the 31 one see, see, normally, yes, there are various judgments on this, on there, on this point, on section 42 of the code, sorry, 42 of the Karnataka Rent Act 1999. It provides the procedure to be followed by the See, again, section 42, subsection 6, 42, subsection 6, here, somewhat substance evidence in us today. Now, the under section 42, subsection 6, can again, special procedure has to be followed by the court when a petition is filed under section 31, 1A, 1C, 1B. What is this special procedure is? See, immediately after the service of the summons, upon the defendant, upon the respondent, then the respondent, if he wants to contest the matter, he should seek the leave of the court before filing a written statement or a statement of objections. He should seek the leave of the court. See, therefore, section 42, subsection 2 of the court, actually, sorry, this is the uh, uh, current current tax here. See, every application by a landlord for the recovery of possession of any premises on the ground specified in clauses F, H, R, N of subsection 2 of section 2, 27 or under section 30, 31 or 37 shall be dealt with in accordance with the procedure specified in this subsection. In accordance with the procedure specified in this section. What is B? B says section 42, subsection 6, class B. Class B says the tenant on whom 
the summons is duly served whether in the ordinary way or by a registered post in the prescribed form shall not contest the prayer for eviction from the premises unless he files an affidavit stating that stating the grounds on which he seeks to contest the application for eviction and obtains the leave of the court the obtains the leave of the court as herein after provided and in default of his appearance in pursuance of the summons or of obtaining such leave the statement made by the landlord in his application for eviction shall be deemed to be admitted by the tenant and the application shall be and the applicant shall be entitled to an order for eviction on the ground of consent yes hope you have understood now the sum and substance of this section is for section 42 subsection 6 class 2 yes means when once the eviction petition is filed under section 29 30 31 272 or then the special procedure has to be followed what is the special procedure tenant should seek leave of the court to contest the matter on what grounds he is going to contest the eviction petition filed by the landlord against the tenant if it is not if the leave of the court has not been obtained then the, there is no other way except the, the court will pass an order for eviction of the tenant on this point first judgment rendered by honorable mr justice dv shailendra kumar that is there i will tell you later also yes in that judgment directly eviction order was passed against the tenant without recording of the evidence evidence is also not recorded by the trial trial court what is the order of the trial court is order of the trial court or without obtaining the leave of the court if the objection statement is filed by the tenant then the court will pass an order for eviction why because there is a irregularity or the procedure prescribed under the Karnataka rent tax has not been hope you are getting my point i think yes this is important provision then i will tell you the <coughs> case laws rendered by the our honorable high court and also supreme court yes then the in addition to these sections very important section is section 45 is very important section in karnataka rent tax what is section 45 yes anybody yes that is corresponding to the section 272a corresponding to section 272a see under section 272a arrears of the rent can be claimed by the landlord against the tenant if there is an arrears of the rent or if the tenant has not paid the rent then the section 272a provides for issuance of the notice to the tenant 60 days in advance notice has to be given if no notice is given if no notice is given then the, during the pendency of the proceedings landlord can make an application under section 45 subsection 1 of the karnataka rent act 1999 what is section 45 there yes section yes anybody yes section 45 is important not only for the hrc court or the small class court even a revision petition is filed either for the high court 
or before the district court. See, under section, forty section, sorry, uh, uh, section forty six of the current current act provides for filing a revision petition. Where to file a revision petition? That is the different thing. I will tell you. First, section forty five says deposit. And payment of rent during the pendency of proceedings. Now, the deposit and payment of rent during the pendency of proceedings for eviction. Yes, this is a mandatory provision. It says that. 45, 42, 43, 44 is all. All the three section and sub sections are very important. Here, no tenant against whom an application for eviction has been made by the landlord under section 27 shall be entitled to contest application before the court under that section, or to prefer or prosecute revision petition. Under Section 46, against an order made by the court on the application under Section 27, unless he has paid the, unless he has paid or paid or pays to the landlord or deposits in the court or the district judge or the high court, as the case may be, all arrears of rent and other charges due in respect of premises, premises up to the date of payment of. Or deposit and continue to pay, or to deposit any rent, which may subsequently become due in respect of the premises at the time at which it was last paid or agreed to be paid until the termination of the proceedings before the court or the district court. Here, this is enabling provision means landlord can file an application if there is any arrears of rent. During the pendency of the proceedings, in what it says is deposit and payment of rent during the pendency of the proceedings for eviction. For eviction means, therefore, you see, for example, immediately after the uh, 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 final order passed by the R, the order passed by the eviction court or the small causes court, if the revision petition is filed before the high court, see, along with the revision petition, arrears of the rent for having paid the arrears of the rent. Till the date of filing of the revision petition has to be shown. Certain document has to be has to be produced before the High Court in case the revision petition is filed under Section 46 of the Tenant Tenant Act 1990. Here, this is applicable only after the institution of the proceedings for eviction of the tenant. This part, Section 44. Difference between Section 27 2A and Section 46. What is the difference? Difference is section 27 to a before initiation of the proceedings. So, if there is any arrears of the rent, then the notice has to be issued. After the expiration of 60 days from the date of issue of the notice, then the eviction petition has to be filed. Then the the court will pass an order that our direction is given to the tenant to make the arrears of the rent within one month. If within one month, if no arrears of the rent is paid by the Tenant, then the court has got power to pass an order of eviction, order for eviction of the tenant. Here, this is not like this. After the institution of the proceedings, if the tenant did not pay the arrears of the rent, then the under section forty five sub section one of the Tenant Tenant Act can be made. The application can be made. Then the next is the the deposit of the rent and other charges. The sub section two shall be made within the time in the manner described. Here, here also, where there is uh, any dispute, forty-four subsection four of the Act is important. Here it says that if any tenant fails to pay or deposit the rent of the said, here the court, the district judge or the high court, as the case may be, shall unless the tenant has shown sufficient cause to the contrary, stop all further proceedings and make an order directing the tenant to put the landlord in possession. Of the <coughs> in possession of the premises, or dismiss the appeal or revision petition as the case may be. 
yes, 45 subsection of the core of the act is important. Even for non government of the years of the rent, the court has got power to pass an order for eviction of the tenant. So, this is 45 subsection 4 of the Karnataka Rent Act. Hope you have understood. If there is any doubts or difficulties, you can ask me. I will give you certain judgments of the Supreme Court and the High Court on Section 311C, 311A, and also Section 45 of the Act. Yes. Any doubts or difficulties, you can ask me. Yes.